Hey, what's going on, friend? I wanna talk a little bit about online dating today. This is not a bash online dating. This is also not a online dating is the best thing. I'm a little mixed in the online dating space right now. So I do believe that it is a good way to meet people if you don't normally frequent places that have a lot of people where you can meet and you're stuck to, listen, I go to work or I work from home and I really don't have opportunities. It's a good way to meet people, but I think it also speeds up the dating process a little bit too fast for me because both people are on there. So it's almost like we meet on there, we talk on there, we go out twice and then people think, man, hey, we're exclusive. I'm like, slow down, bro. I don't even know you. You know, it's like, I know what you've presented. I know what you look like but I really don't know you to commit to you in an exclusive dating relationship. Um, so, and if you're a glutton for punishment like I am, and you watch shows like 90 Day Fiance, Catfish, Tinder Swindler, um, I'm always amazed at the level of emotional and, and even life commitment these people get into with people that they have never even met. And many of them are willing to give up money, fly across the country, give up their families, for a relationship with somebody. Some of them have never even seen the person on video chat. And then you see them showing up in an airport in Colombia, hoping the person's gonna show up when the person has stood them up like five times. I'm embarrassed for you, dude. So that's why you need community so you don't do stupid stuff like that. Um, but here, here's what I believe. If you're gonna date online, I think that you have to have a plan for how you will progress in the relationship and the steps that you will take along the way and do not abandon that plan for any reason. I don't care how much you're feeling it, I don't care what they say, you need to have a progression plan for how you start conversation and you move all the way into a dating relationship and you need to stick with it if it's gonna go well. Otherwise, I think online dating can be a mess. So I wanna present to you what I believe is a healthy and good progression if you are somebody who is dating online. So number one, step number one is obvious. I don't need to spend a whole lot of time here, but you begin communication on the app or platform, right? I mean, that, that's where it's gotta start. Whether you swipe, whether you select each other, whatever, at some point, you begin conversation with the person via the messaging on the app and the platform. This is a great time to see, do I even like talking with this person, texting with this person, messaging with this person on here? Am I even enjoying it? Is this somebody I would like to continue talking with? And listen, if that person tries to move you off of the app, get numbers and start talking that way too soon, just let them know that's not how I roll. I don't know you. I know what you're presenting, uh, but I don't know you yet, so I don't roll that way. I stay on this app for a little while, and if you are enjoying conversation via the app, then I would quickly move to step number two, and step number two is video connection with the person. Now, I preferably would want that to happen on the app or platform. Some of the apps have their own video service. Others don't. If they don't, I would stay away from things like FaceTime where you gotta give them your number, go with Zoom, go with some other video apps that don't if you need to get a Google number or something, but do not give them your number yet. But I think you need to see them. These, these shows that we watch are crazy where I'm like, dude, you've been talking to this person for a year, two years, and you've never physically seen them. I need to see you on video to make sure you actually look like what your profile says you look like, because listen, don't lie, some of the women out here are magicians with makeup. Their profile pic and the regular of them is not the same person. Some of these dudes too. Your profile pic is from 12 years ago. Your hair is not still dark and full. You look different now. Now, I'm not talking about our, our because you're going to put put forth your best, right, on the profile. I get that. But there should not be such a drop from your best to your regular that when I walk in a room, I can't even find you. I'm not saying like, oh, you look a little, quite a bit different than you do in your profile app. I'm like, there is no way on God's green earth that that profile picture and you standing in front of me are the same people. So I think you need to quickly get on the video. If you're enjoying conversation via the messaging, the app, I think you quickly need to get this person on a video chat 
to have a conversation to make sure that what they look like and what they sound like and how they talk and how they interact on video when you're staring at them is congruent with the messages that you are getting when you can't see them to make sure this is the same person. I just think that needs to happen quickly <laughs> so that you are not spending time talking to somebody who is not really who you think you're talking to. And if that's going well, then I think you need to move into step number three. Step number three is that you meet in person. Listen, you need to see this person face to face. People are different via text, via video on the phone than they are in person. So you need to see them. You need to get lock eyes on them. You need to feel what it feels like to be in their presence. Now, with some caveats, this needs to be in a public place. Your friends need to know where you're at, when you're arriving, and when you're leaving. You are not picking each other up. You are meeting there, driving separate. And guess what? The date ends at the place, not back at somebody's place. You got me? So when you meet in person, public, your friends know where you are. They know when you arrive. They know when you leave because you're letting them know. You're not driving together. You're meeting at the place. And the date ends at the place, not back at somebody's place. That's what needs to happen. You meet in person as step number three. If you're still feeling good about it, then I would have no problem going to step number four, which is exchange numbers. Now, again, if you are more safety-minded, then you still could use a Google number. You don't have to give them your real number. And I would say this, listen, if they've been aggressive with messaging via the app, then probably you don't want to give them your number. Like if, if they're wearing you out, if they're doing it too much, that kind of stuff, then maybe you don't want to. But if they haven't been, at this point, you're probably building a friendship. You've talked with them quite a bit. You've been out with them in person. you got a, probably a decent feel for their temperament, for their character, for who they are. So at this point, I don't think there's a problem with exchanging numbers. If you're comfortable with exchanging numbers, go ahead and do it. If you're a little bit leery, then give them a Google number. That way, if something doesn't work out, they don't have your other number and won't be able to wear you out. If you're still feeling good about things, I think step number five is you need to introduce each other to your communities. That means they need to be around your people and you need to be around their people. So I don't care what that looks like. If that's a, a group date with a bunch of people, if that's inviting them over and having a little barbecue at your place, if that's hanging out, but your people need to lock eyes on this person too because at this point, you're probably enjoying time with them. You're probably getting emotionally attached on some level. And listen, you may have some blinders on, so you need your community to be around them to go, yeah, I think we would endorse this or nah, we probably wouldn't. And listen, I'm telling you more than anything, if the people that know and love you and care about you are not comfortable with somebody you're dating, that should be enough, period, no matter what. These people are in your life for a reason. Our feelings can confuse us and cloud our judgment. We have to know that going in. So if your community is not comfortable, you should not be with the person, period. Don't fight your community. Don't isolate yourself. You are not Romeo and Juliet. Everyone ended up dead in that story anyway. This is not a you two against the world. Community is important. And you need to get around their community. Because they can say what they want. They can present themselves as whoever they are. But if the people they hang out with are not people you're comfortable with or you would hang out with, we have a problem here. Because this person cannot be the exception in their group forever. Meaning, well, they're solid and they're great and all their friends are not that great, but they really help them and influence them. At some point, their community is influencing them too. You want them around good people that you would want to be around. So I think step number five is you need to get around each other's community to really know if this is somebody that we should be progressing with to the next step. And the next step is just continue dating. So once we've progressed through one, two, three, four, five, and we're in six, keep dating a person. Get to know the person. This is a process. Most experts say that you really, the stuff in people's lives really doesn't come out till at least three months into a relationship. So if you're in the first three months, just know you don't know because it ain't coming out. Your stuff is not coming out. Their stuff is not coming out. 
We've got to spend time around somebody to really know who they are. We've got to see them in multiple environments. If you are only seeing them in the same environment every time, it's when we go out and we're out to dinner or whatever, listen, you're only getting one piece of the person. When you're dating somebody, you need to get them in multiple environments so you can see how they are in multiple environments. That's really the only way to know who this person really is. And can I tell you something? Because you really don't know somebody in the first three months, do not be having sex with them, especially in the first three months. That's just plain stupid. And I know you're gonna go, well, but I mean, we gotta figure out if we got sexual chemistry. No, you're just horny. That's not healthy. That's not gonna help your relationship. I can bring you plenty of research that shows having sex with the person clouds your judgment, makes you think you're more attached and connected than you are. So until you can bring me some research, that actually shows that having sex early on in a relationship is beneficial and healthy and helpful to a relationship, just stop. You do not need to get physical at this point. It will just mess up your ability to correctly evaluate the relationship. So there's six steps that I think that you should progress in if you're doing online dating, don't rush them. Don't make exceptions. I don't care how much you feel like you know them. I don't care how much you, you feel like you love them and this is the person you always waited for. If you do not have a plan and you do not stick to your plan, you're gonna find yourself with somebody standing outside your window stalking you or you're gonna be driving over to pick him up from the apartment he shares with his mother because his car is in the shop for the third month in a row because you didn't follow a plan. You followed your heart. Your heart is important, but you have to date with your head and your heart. Okay, that's enough. That's my thoughts on online dating. Till next time, see you later.